this video I'm going to introduce you to Adobe Illustrator by putting together a brand board um, but the skills are completely transferable to pretty much any project. We're going to be looking at creating simple shapes as well as using vector shapes to make clipping masks for images. I'll show you how as a beginner you can use Illustrator to adapt found artwork and make it your own. We'll also look at how we can handle some text and I'm also um, going to include a few handy tips on how to lay out a page and how we can quickly relay the page for an alternate layout. So let's get going. Um, this is what we're going to be um, aiming towards um, by the end of this, this session. This is a little brand board um, for an imaginary um, dog clothing company called Chili Whip It. Um, the, a brand board essentially is um, a very trimmed down version of brand guidelines if you like. So the kinds of things that I'm going to include are a logo, a colour palette, um, I've got this little trend board in here and also um, the kinds of photographs that you might use and patterns. Um, I've got some uh, social icons that I've made for the brand, a favicon or fa fave icon, whatever you want to um, call it and also the typefaces that I would like um, to use with my brand. So I'm going to close this down and I'm going to open up a new document and I know most of my students have been um, told they need to create their boards um, as A4 but I prefer to work at A3. Um, you can always shrink your board down. Um, everything you do in Illustrator is completely scalable, whether you, you're scaling up or down, it doesn't really matter. Um, but I just prefer working a little larger, I find it easier. So um, but it's entirely up to you. So you can pick either A3 or A4. Um, these have come up for me because they're in my, um, my recents up here, um, but you might not have uh, this showing. You might need to go to print. Now I suggest you go to print rather than mobile, web or film and video because those three methods there um, use pixels for measuring. Um, so it just gives you one extra thing to, to switch around. So I'm going to stick with um, print. I'm going to type in the dimensions for A3 which is 420 by 297 millimetres. Okay, so it's important that you have millimetres set in here. Um, just expand that out so you can see it properly. I'm not going to add any bleed for this. I do need to change my colour mode, however, because I'm not sending this to be commercially printed, so it doesn't need to be in CMYK. I'm going to switch that to RGB. Um, if you've been in my workshops, um, I've already explained to you why we do that. Um, I'm leaving my raster effects on high. 300 pixels per inch um, and then I just need to create. So there's my um, my blank page. Um, first thing I'm going to do is find my logo. Now you may not have a logo to find so you might have to go rummaging around on the internet looking for um, the logo that you want. I suggest um, you convert it to um, a vector piece of artwork. Again, in the workshops I've already um, shown you how to do that, but it's fairly straightforward. Um, you just use image trace. Um, but I'm going to go to uh, file and open and I'm going to look for my, um, my Chili Whip It logo, which is this one here. You can see it's got um, this as a suffix which says AI, stands for Adobe Illustrator, so I know that this is an Adobe Illustrator document and you can see its size here. Um, so this is a, on, a, a, on an A3 board, this, um, this logo, but you can see that the file size is really quite tiny. That's because it's got relatively few points and we're not calculating loads and loads of pixels like we do in Photoshop. So I'm just going to open this up and there it is. So all I need to do now is just select all, um, which I'm going to use um, a keyboard shortcut for, but if you prefer, you can go to select and choose all. You can see my keyboard shortcut is here, 
Okay, I'm using a Mac at the moment, so this little symbol here is the command key um, and the letter A. If you're using a PC, it will be control and the letter A. Um, so command and A will select all the pixels. You can see they're all highlighted now. And then I can copy that. Um, again, if I go to edit and choose copy, you can see here's the keyboard shortcut, which is Command C or Control C on a PC. So I'm going to copy and I'm going to hop back to my new document and paste it, which is Command or Control V. So there's my logo on my page. And at this stage, I don't really know where I want to put it. All I know is that it's very big. OK, it's rather large. Um, to be sitting on my document. So I'm just going to um, scale it down. Now to scale this, um, I've got no stroke on on this drawing, okay? So it's all just fill. That's because I've, I've made it so, so I don't have any issues with scaling. So if I were to pass this on to a third party and they scaled it, it would be absolutely fine. But if you've got outlines, um, you've if you've got strokes on your um, logo, when you scale it, you may find that the um, the lines themselves don't shrink down in size, okay? In which case, you're going to need to use this tool here. This is the scale tool. Um, I'm going to show you how to use this. So I've picked the scale tool, and you'll notice that my um, cursor looks like a little crosshair. Wherever I click, this crosshair becomes my point of origin. Okay, so I'm going to scale this down and it will scale down to whichever point I click on. Now you can see I've got a little center bullseye kind of thing going on here. So I could scale into the center. Just need to re click that. Um, or I can hold down the Alt key um, and I can click now and it will give me a dialog box um, and I can dial in a specific amount I want to scale by. So I'm going to show you both methods. So I'm going to scale to the outer edge of the C here. So I've just clicked here. So now you can see my little um, scaling point is here. My cursor has now changed to this black arrow. And if I pick up anywhere on here and scale down, now you can see I'm going to distort this logo. Now there's one thing you really should never do and that's distort somebody's brand logo, okay? So to prevent this from happening, while you're scaling, you need to be holding down the shift key at the same time. When you hold the shift key, okay, you should be able to retain its proportions. There we go. If I pull hard enough though, it will distort. There we are, like that. But it will usually ping back. Okay, so if I wanted it to go down to about that size, I just release my mouse button and then the key. I'm just gonna undo that, Command Z, and I'm gonna show you how that works when we use the scale tool. Now this is going to be how you're going to do it if you've got um, any kind of stroke on your logo. Um, when I hold down the Alt key, you can see my cursor gets these little dots after it, like I've got something to say. Um, and that's because it's going to, when I click my mouse or my trackpad, um, it's going to call up a little dialog box like this. So this is the dialog box that appears. And you can see here, that I can scale uniformly or non-uniformly. Um, obviously, I don't want to cause any distortion, so I'm going to use uniform. I'm going to scale it down to about 50%. And you can see here, I've got the options to scale the corners and scale strokes and effects. So if you're finding when you scale things down by, uh, by hand without calling up this little dialog box, that you're not scaling the, um, the strokes, that they're staying the same thickness they always were, then you need to go um, via this method. Okay, so you hold down the Alt key and then click and this dialog box will come up. 
So you need to make sure that these things are scaled in order to maintain the appearance of your logo. So um, I'm just going to click OK and there it is, scale down. And I'm just going to um, pop the logo up here. Now, when we were making our trend boards a couple of weeks ago, um, I did tell you not to put things too close to the edges. I said nothing important um, should go in the margins. Um, so we've got no margins, we've got nothing on this board at the moment. So I'm going to show you how we can use some guides to help us. So I'm going to first of all um, show my rulers. Now the easiest way to do that is use a keyboard shortcut of either Command or Control R for ruler, like that. And now you can see we've got our rulers showing. Now I'm measuring in um, millimetres. If you're finding that you're measuring in something completely different, you need to go to Preferences and Units and change your units here. Okay, I don't need to do that, but that's where you go if you do. So, um, I'm going to add a guide. Now, this works in Illustrator, it works in InDesign, and it works in Photoshop. To get a guide on the page, we just go to the rulers, and we drag in a ruler, like so. Now, I'm going to have about a 15 mil thereabouts. It doesn't have to be terribly accurate. So, I've put a guide in at about 15 millimeters, and I'm doing the same like that. So I'm not going to put anything important. So I'm just going to put the bounding box. So that's sitting inside my um, important area if you like. I can put guides on the other side as well. And then I can put one on the bottom like that. So they're going to be my margin guides, um, so I'm not going to put anything of any um, importance outside of these little guides. Okay, you'll also find when you create guides in Illustrator, unlike Photoshop, they are automatically locked, so you won't be able to accidentally pick these up and move them around. Okay, they don't print and they won't show if you create a PDF. Okay, so we've got our logo on. Um, now I'm going to create um, some colour swatches. Now I've already decided um, what my colours are going to be. Um, so I'm going to decide on a shape. Now um, on the example that I showed you right at the beginning, I'd used um, circles and I quite like that. And that's, that's uh, going to be a little thing for my brand, the um, images and swatches and those kind of things. Um, if they were on a website or in a brochure, would always be in circles. It might also be that a circle um, becomes part of the brand. So it might be labels and things are, um, are circular. Um, so that kind of decision is, is kind of important. Um, so I'm, to make a circle, I use the ellipse tool. So if you can't see the ellipse tool, you might see the rectangle tool instead. So click on that and then scroll down to where it says ellipse. And I'm going to um, draw a circle. And again, um, I want it to be up here somewhere, I think. So I'm just going to draw out a circle. Um, about that kind of size. I don't want it to be too small. Um, at the moment this is filled with white and has no stroke, um, which is all right while I get it into position. The problem with it having no stroke though and it being white is if I deselect it we can't see it. It's still there however. So what I think I'll do is I'll just put a black stroke on it for now so I can see where this is. Now I'm going to show you a neat little trick for um, uh, getting things um, duplicated. So you can see here that I'm duplicating this and you can tell by my cursor arrow. Can you see how I've got this black and white double arrow as I move this shape? Now how I'm doing this 
is I'm holding down the Alt key. If I take my, my finger off the Alt key, you can see it returns to an ordinary um, black arrow cursor. Okay, if I put my finger back on the Alt key, you can see we're duplicating again. You'll also notice that this is dragging out completely horizontally from the original um, and you'll find that I can drag at 45 degrees and I can drag vertically and that's because I'm also holding down the shift key. Okay, so I've got two keys in play here. I've got the alt key and the shift key. So I quite like that gap that I've got between those two circles. So now I'm going to release my mouse button. Actually, I'm using a trackpad, so I've released my trackpad. And then I release the keys. Okay, now I don't need to do that again. I don't need to guess at the distance um, that I've, I've dragged that. I can use um, something called duplicate. Okay, so I can go to um, I can't even remember where it lives. Can you believe that? Oh, God, I'm stuff it up. You can stop it and edit it together, can't you? Yeah. I'll, I'll just chop it out. I just need to find duplicate. Remind me. Just make a point of how far you're into the... I, I can't tell. Oh. Where's duplicate live? Object. Uh, Illustrator. I just use Command D, you see, but um, well, I do believe it. It's not on a menu anymore. Oh, there it is. Transform again. Yeah, it's it's not called duplicate. Okay, so I don't have to remember or try and guess how far I've dragged that. I can create that transformation again. Um, now to do this, I go to Object and Transform and use Transform again. Whatever the last thing that you did, that's what it will do again for you. Okay, now the keyboard shortcut for that is um, Command or Control D. Um, so I'm going to use that instead. So Command D. And then I'm going to use Command D again, and Command D again, and again. Now I've got six colours in my um, my swatch um, swatches for the Chili Whippet brand. So um, you can see that this is now going into our important zone. So these are too big. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to select all of them, and I'm doing that by dragging over them. Now sometimes dragging over things is perfectly okay and sometimes if you've got other things in play you might actually want to just click on each individual item and select it like this. Now I'm doing that by holding the shift key down and just clicking on the things that I want. So whichever method suits you best and then I'm going to scale this. Okay. Now I don't need to use the scale tool, I can just come to um, the corner of that group, hold the shift key, that will constrain them down to circles and just make it a tiny bit smaller, like so. That'll do me. Okay, and I'm just going to pop that there. And then I'm going to fill each of these with a different colour. I'm also going to remove that black stroke as I go through this. Now my primary colours for my, my colour palette for Chili Whippet are obviously um, these two colours in my logo. Now um, the logo was set up as you saw in another document but if I click on this and go to my swatches panel and drag this down you can see there's all these colours here and then right at the bottom you can see I've got these two Pantone colours. Now they, they came into this document when I brought this logo in. Okay, So you don't have to remember um, what Pantone colours you've used from one document to another. They will all come in. I'm also going to show you a neat little trick now for getting rid of all these other colours that we don't need Okay, because they're kind of getting in our way. 
So if I just go to this little drop down in the swatches panel, um, and then I'm going to um, select all unused. So that's everything that's not being used currently. And then I'm going to delete. So I'm going to delete that swatch selection. And now we're just left with what's being used on the page. That's much more manageable. So first things first, I'm going to click um, this circle in our swatches. And I just want to use um, this blue. Okay, so it's Pantone 7463 in this case, like so. And then I'm going to remove, so I'm just going to click on the stroke and just remove that. And then I'm going to go back to my swatches and do this. Oops, that's. There we go. And then take the stroke off. And then this one, I'm going to use an, a different Pantone colour. Now, um, I've, as I say, I've already decided what colours are going to be in my brand. I'm going to use um, something called Pantone Warm Grey 1. Um, now, we need to go and find that. Now, we've done away with all the other swatches, but it wasn't here to begin with. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to this little drop down again, and we're going to open up a swatch library. And you'll find all these in colour books. And here we are. This is the, the colour book that I'm going to use. It's Pantone Solid Coated. And bingo, there's my Pantone Warm Grey 1. Now that just happens to be um, the one that comes up because it's what I used last on the, um, the previous document. Okay, so I just need to get rid of that um, stroke colour as well. And then I'm going on to the next one. And this colour is going to be Pantone 575. So, so Pantone 575, so it's this kind of green. And again, I just need to get rid of that stroke colour. Swatch here is going to be um, Pantone um, 75. Eight nine, um, which is this kind of brown colour. So I'm going to add that in. So if I select this, there we go. And then I want stroke colour gone again. And then this one is going to be um, Pantone five four three five. Okay. Oops. Make the stroke colour that blue. There we are. So they're all my colours, and you can see they've all been added into my swatches. So um, this um, whole document now contains all my brand colours. Um, so this is already quite a useful little document. If I were to send this to um, to somebody, um, I could um, communicate all the colours and they would have all those swatch colours. Now the other important thing to know is that these colours have other ways of being described. So um, if I come down here onto my um, little um, colour picker and click on here, this is where it's sitting on my colour picker and you can see we've got various descriptions of it. So we've got hue, saturation and brightness. Okay, so the hue is where it sits on the color wheel in, in degrees, so 204 degrees. How saturated the color is, so 17%, and how bright it is, which is 78%, because it's quite a light color. It's not overly saturated, okay? And then we've also got um, some terms for red, green and blue, how much red light, how much green light, how much blue light and also a CMYK breakdown for commercial print. We also have this little descriptor down here which always begins with a hash. This is the hex colour, this is how it's described in code form um, for screen 
I've also made um, a trend board for um, this, this particular brand. So um, I'm going to bring that in as a kind of an example of, of, a, of a trend board for um, Chili Whip It. So I'm just going to go to File and this time I'm going to choose Place. Now the reason I'm placing this is it's because it was done in, um, in Photoshop. So if I just stretch that out, you can see it's called Modern Day Heathcliff Trend Board. Um, and there it is. So I've got a Photoshop document version and a JPEG version. I can bring in either, but I know that this will keep my file size a little smaller. So I'm going to use the JPEG. Um, and I'm just going to drag that out to about there, I think. Okay, notice I didn't put it any closer to the edge than that guide. So that guide's earning its keep now. Um, and you can see here, the reason I've chosen some of these images, the reason I've got these colours, you can see they're part of my brand. Um, so the brand is now starting to, um, to, to feel coherent. Okay, So this green colour turns up in the landscape. Um, I've gone for, for these colours. I know it's, it's dog clothing, it's not, it's not the same, same kind of stuff that, that you guys are doing, but this is where the influences have come from. Um, they've come from um, the northern heritage of this particular breed of dog. Um, so I've gone for this Yorkshire landscape with um, the green hills um, and um, these kind of traditional colours. Also this orange, which is in the logo and the navy blue um, and then we've got this stone from stone walls if you go around um, Yorkshire, Lancashire towns and villages um, there's lots of this kind of colour. Um, this is um, the, the colour of um, the sky if you like, it's kind of not quite bright blue. Um, we've got this kind of um, early morning um, misty, misty blue colour. So that's where the colours have come from and you can see it really does pick up in this um, this uh, trend board here. So now I'm going to carry on and I'm going to put some examples of the kinds of photographs that we might use in our brand. Now um, if I was doing this in Photoshop I'd be using layer masks for, um, for this but we can do something similar in Illustrator. Um, what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to pick up um, an image. So I'm just going to use um, file and place and find a picture that I want to um, want to add in. Yeah I think I think this might be my first one that I'm going to bring in. So um, I'm going to place this image and again it comes in on a loaded icon. Now I don't want these to be enormous so I'll drag that out and drop it there. And then I'm going to use another circle. So I'm, I'm going to stick with this circle theme. Um, so I'm going to go to my ellipse tool again. You can see I've got it selected here. And then I'm going to draw a circle um, a little bit bigger than my, um, my swatches. So about that kind of size. It doesn't matter what colour this is. Okay, I'm just going to position it here. Now it at this stage, I could position it over here. It, it doesn't make any difference, but I'm going to get it in more or less the right place. Then I'm going to use the shift key to select the image as well. So I've actually got this circle and the picture selected. The circle is on top. That's the only important thing. OK, so now um, I go to my object menu and I choose something called clipping mask and make. You can see it's got a keyboard shot of shortcut of command 7 and I've made my clipping mask. Now at this stage um, if I wanted to move it I can pick it up and move it and it moves as a whole um, or I can use the um, direct selection tool deselect and then just pick up the image and move the image around inside that circle. Okay like that. So that's that's how I go about doing um, doing that. So I'm going to now um, just release that because of what I should have done is I should have 
duplicated that. Now if you do find yourself in this situation where you've used uh, made a clipping mask and you need to um, release it, um, you can. You need to select the object with the selection tool, go to object, choose clipping mask and then choose release and it will put the two things back together again. So I'm quite happy with how that looks. So now I'm going to pick up this circle and on its own and I'm going to just drag select it. Oops, a daisy. So I'm making a copy like that and then I'm going to use that keyboard shortcut that we used earlier which was command or control D and then I'm going to pick up all three of the circles and then I'm going to drag them downwards it would have helped if I'd actually put some kind of line on them so I can actually see them um, and then I've got all all six of my images because that's how many images I'm going to have on this so I'm just going to block these in so I can actually see them so I'm just putting a white fill and the black stroke on them like so so that's where they're going to be um, I can also get a better idea on size I'm thinking maybe they might be a little on the large side so I think I'll I'll delete them so this is the nice thing, you can change your mind as often as you like. So I think they're just a tad big, so maybe that kind of size might be better. So remember to duplicate that up, I'm holding the shift key to constrain it so it stays horizontal and I'm holding the alt key to um, duplicate and then control or command D there we are yeah they are too big I want I want four in I've decided I'm gonna have an eight so I'm not gonna worry about it too much pop those there like that so now I've got my my grid of eight I can select them all up and then scale them down so they fit better. Now remember I can go all the way out to that line. I'm just going to nudge those over a bit. There we are. Okay, I think I'll move them up as well. Maybe line them up with the top of that um, trend board. So as you're moving these things round, you'll feel um, or see these little intersection lines, these pink lines, and they kind of help you um, line things up and get things looking really smart on your page. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So now I'm going to position my picture. I might need to make it a little smaller. So again, I'm holding down the shift key because I don't want to distort pictures. Um, you need to try and avoid that if you can. So my picture's going to go there and then I click on the circle, hold the shift key and click on the image and then I'm going to go to object, choose clipping mask and make or command 7. There we are. So now I'm going to do the same thing for these images. I'm going to um, uh, just run ahead so I'll come back to you when I've done this. So you rejoin me just as I'm putting um, some textures in here and um, you can see I've added um, this kind of orange fleece because I thought it went well with this image and I'm just going to add this um, olive green um, quilted fabric. Now this will happen to you sooner or later because um, I've created all these circular shapes and I'm putting in the images that I want um, uh, inside those circles afterwards and um, this is kind of what's happening um, so I've got my image I position it over the shape that I want now it's on top now I, I said right at the beginning of making these clipping masks that the um, the image needs to be behind the shape that you're going to um, clip it to so to do this 
Um, I use uh, a keyboard, uh, a load of keyboard shortcuts basically, but I can um, right click this and choose arrange and center back. Okay. Um, and then I can select my um, my circle. So I've selected both both of those shapes, and then um, Command or Control Seven, which will make the clipping mask. I I use a, a slightly different method be, just because I'm used to it. So I don't I don't do that right click and arrange center back. Um, I'll show you again, what, um, but I'll I'll show you how I prefer to do it. So I'm just going to go to place. This time I'm looking for a navy blue quilted, there we are, um, image to go with this picture. It's not quite big enough. I'll just stretch it out. Okay, what I prefer to do is I will cut it. So Command X and paste behind, which is Command B. Um, and then... Um, shift select the circle and then um, command or control seven. Okay, so that's that's they're all variations on a theme. It's no right and wrong way, just different ways of doing stuff. Um, I'm just trying to give you um, options here. So finally, I'm going for this kind of sage colored um, fleece. So I'm just going to open the sage fleece image. Oops, didn't mean to do that. <laughs> it should have been placed though. So that's what happens when you open. And I should have gone to place. Okay, and then I'm going to cut that, paste him back, and then shift. And then command seven. There we are. So I've got my pictures in place. So you can see this is really starting to um, take shape. Um, I've also um, decided I'm going to put some social icons. So if this was a website um, or if I was going to be building a website or a brochure and I was going to include any kind of um, social media icons, I wouldn't necessarily want them to look um, like Facebook or Instagram or um, you know because they're their own brands so I need to kind of make these so they're branded to match my brand um, now I I don't want to spend hours redrawing things that already exist so I'm going to show you um, how um, I created my little social icons for the Chili Whippet brand um, essentially, um, what I did was I went online and found, I just searched for social media icons, so I'm just going to pop into uh, Microsoft Edge, social media icons, and you'll find a whole raft of things here, so um, let's just have a little look under images. Um, I need them to be of a reasonable size. Now, this one's good. You can see we've got loads and loads of pixels, so I could download this one. Um, it's also got a transparent background. This kind of gray grid in the background is transparent, so that's gonna be quite useful for me. Now, somebody's already taken the, the trouble to design this. This is not my design. I'm just going to borrow some elements. I'm not going to um, steal somebody else's design here. So I'm just going to um, download this. I'm just going to save the image. I'll just save it onto my desktop for now. Um, you can see I've already done it once. So I'll replace it. So I'm doing it afresh for you. Okay. And if I close that down, now I'm going to use Photoshop, okay? Um, and this is where I'm going to take this. So I'm just going to close that down and reopen it. So it's on my desktop. So this is what I've just downloaded. And you can see here I've got this um, transparent background. Now this is quite handy. Um, what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to change the mode from RGB colour to grayscale. So I'm going to get rid of all that colour information because I don't need it. 
Um, all I really want is um, the white shapes. Now we've got something fairly handy called levels in Photoshop. So I'm going to go to image adjustment and levels and I'm going to make these really dark apart from the white bits. Now this little stick here of white, that's what's keeping these absolutely white. So I'm just going to run this down so everything is super black. Okay. And then what I'm going to do is on this transparent background, I'm going to add a new layer and I'm just going to drop it underneath. Okay, so layer one is up here, layer two is here and I'm going to flood this layer with the paint bucket tool with black like this. Okay, then I'm going to flatten this image. So if I go to the little drop down in the corner, choose flatten image and then I'm going to go to image and I'm going to go to adjustments and choose invert. And there we have the elements that I actually want. Okay, so now I can save as. So I'm just going to save this. Um, I'll save it on my desktop again. I'm going to call it social icons and I'm going to save it as a JPEG okay and then I can close that hop back into Illustrator and this time I'm going to make a new document it's only going to be A4 this time and then I'm going to place my social icons JPEG that I've made. Like so. And then I'm going to use image trace. Okay. So now I've got a vector based version of this. Now there's some bits that I will need to get rid of. So for example, it will have this white line and um, this white shape around. If you select it, you can see there's a, a box here and it's filled with white. So I'm just going to delete that. Okay, won't do any, any harm. And then I'm going to um, bring these in one at a time, but I think I might make the icons here first. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to my brand board and decide what colour um, to make them. Now I could just pick up all these and copy. Let's just get hold of them properly. So I could copy those and take them in here. And now as soon as I've brought these into this space, if I go onto my swatches and choose um, select all unused and delete. I'm left just with those colours that are most useful to me. Okay, so I could have a little play around with these. Now, circles are my theme. Okay, so I'm going to pick up this F and decide. Now, you can see it's behind. Okay, so if you have this kind of thing going on, all you have to do is right click, arrange and bring it to the front. Okay, and if it doesn't come to the front, you can do my little trick, which is cut it and paste in front. So that is control or command X and control or command F for front, F for Foxtrot. Okay, so I might like this kind of look, but I don't want the F to be black. I might want it to be white. Okay. Or I might think that the F in white on the blue might look better. So let's make this F white first of all. So I just click on my swatches like so. And I might want it to just kind of bust out a little bit. So it drops out the bottom like that. Or I could make it a teeny bit bigger so it just kind of 
breaks out the top as well. So you can still see what that is. I quite like that. It's much better than it being held entirely in that circle. Um, or I might prefer it on the orange. It doesn't really work on that light grey or we might prefer it on this green colour or on the brown, maybe on the blue, but I think we'd struggle to see those. So I'm thinking, I'm thinking the orange. Okay, because that orange is very distinctive. So I'm going to pop that there like that. Okay, so I can get rid of the rest of these. And you can see these are residual things left over from um, so I, I don't need that F anymore and I might want another circle so I'm going to need six of these so that's two and that same technique again I'm using that keyboard shortcut command D so that's four five six doesn't matter if I go off my um, my board slightly so I can just pop those there like that and then put the Twitter birdie again I'm going to cut it paste in front it needs to go a tiny bit smaller so I'm switching to the selection tool to scale this down oops just dropped it now I'm going to cheat ever so slightly because this is my logo. People just need to be able to recognise it as being for Twitter. So I'm just going to pull that so those three little points there break out and I'm going to make it white. Okay, and then I'm going to do the same thing with my YouTube. So this bit's going to be orange, this bit's going to be white. And again, I need to Okay, and again, I could make it a little bit bigger. Now, I'm holding down my Alt key here because I want to scale this from the center so it just breaks out slightly like that. And again, just got some stray points. I'm just going to make this white. There we are. And again, make these bits white. And I just need to scale this one down slightly. I don't want to distort that. There we go, I quite like that, just to one side. And then this, this bit here is going to be orange. This bit here is going to be white. There we are for email. There we are. So they're going to be my um, social icons. I can get rid of any residual bits and bats on here just by dragging over, making sure I've got nothing extraneous in there. Um, so they're going to be my, my social icons um, for my brand board. So I can lift these now. So I'm just going to copy them and 
go back to my board and paste them on here. Now they're a little bit on the big side at the moment um, and I can't quite decide where I'm going to put them. Now I know what else I'm going to be putting on here. I'm go I've got my um, fave icon or favicon um, to put on and also um, my typefaces. So I think this is a good space for my typefaces. So I think I'm going to settle on putting them under here. Um, but I need to leave room for my um, my little uh, web icon or fab icon. Um, so I'm going to stack these up. I think I'll make them a bit smaller first. So let's take them down in size. I think they're a little bit close together as well. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to spread them apart. So I'm going to select them all. I'm going to show you a neat little trick. Um, I'm going to put this one over, oops, a daisy, missed a bit, should have really grouped these, so I'm going to group. Now to group things, again, you can um, select the objects that you want to group together, right click and group. So right click, group, and then I'm going to select those, right click and group, right, whoops. Right click, group, right click and group. So each one of these icons is now grouped together. So when I pick it up, it will move all together. So if I were to move that out to about there and then select each one like so. And then across here, we have um, our little distribution controls, okay? And you can see we can align things to the left, we can align things centrally, but I actually want to um, distribute um, horizontally like so. So I've just used distribute left and it will line them up from the left to the right and there's perfectly even distances between each of them. So I'm going to pick these three up now and I'm going to... position them there. Okay, so I'm still within all my guides. Might just pick them up and take them down to that bottom guide. Like so. So they're my little social icons in there. Um, and then I've got my little web icon um, so I'm going to go to open and I just need to find it, there it is. So this is going to be, this is the little icon that you see, you know, when you open up a website, I'll just quickly show you what I mean. Um, so if we go to, I don't know, something like Amazon. It's this little icon up here, okay? So that's their favicon, this little A with the, the Amazon smile there. Um, so that's what we're talking about here. Oops, plainly didn't pick that up. There it is, it's a bit big at the minute, so I'm just going to scale it down. Now there's nothing to say that I have to use this in the orange just because it's orange up here. I could, if I wanted to, um, change its colour to navy, so that's how it would, it would appear. Um, but I quite like it in that orange colour. Okay, so I'm going to pop that there and then I'm going to put in um, my typefaces. Now these are important, um, they really do help your brand all hang together. Now what I suggest you do is um, you look good and proper. I'm not going to include 
this typeface that I've used in the Chili Whip It logo because um, I wouldn't necessarily use that typeface anywhere else. Um, it's just part of the logo. It's a bit like Coca-Cola don't use um, the same kind of type style that they use on, um, on their Coca-Cola. Um, for the word Coca-Cola, they're not going to use that as a headline on a website, for example. That, that just doesn't happen. Um, so I'm not going to use that either. So I'm going to make it um, a rectangle that I've drawn out using the type tool. Okay. Um, you can see it will automatically fill it with some um, uh, placeholder text. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just type in the name of the typeface, first of all. So I'm using Acumen Pro Condensed. Regular. Okay, and now that is not typed in in Acumen Pro Condensed Regular. Um, it's typed in in Myriad Pro at the moment, but I'm not going to worry about that just now. I'm then going to put my caps lock on. Okay, and then I'm actually going to go and find Acumen Pro Condensed. I'm going to do it here. So I'm going to type in Acumen. Pro, and I want the condensed regular, which is that one. And then I can copy this and then I'm going to change this to thin and this to black. And then highlight that and choose thin and black. And then this one I'm going to change completely to Frederica the greatest like that and if I wanted to I could get rid of this this in Myriad Pro here and choose one of those typefaces so I'm actually going to choose um, Frederica the greatest I'm also going to use one of my colors and you can see it's once you've made some decisions it gets quite quick okay so that didn't take too long um, to do at all and then all that remains really is for me to label everything up so everybody knows what they're looking at. So I'm just going to, um, I think I'll use Frederica the Greatest. So I'm just going to make a, a box here and type in the word logo. Just size it up, make it about 18 point I think. And I'm going to use the blue this time for my la uh, labels. And then I'm going to drag that to there. So I use that technique again of um, copying while I drag by holding down the Alt key. So everything I'm doing now, there are already techniques that we've done. So I'm dragging again. It's 
So this is going to be photographs and patterns. Social icons. Fab icon. and typefaces, not fonts. Right, my images are just a little bit close to that title, so I'm just going to nudge them down. So I'm going to select them all, and I'm using my cursor keys just to nudge those down a tiny bit. There we go. And that's it, pretty much um, finished. Now, I might think mm, it might look better um, if it was portrait, or it might look better if it was laid out differently, or I'd put things down in a different order. Once you've got everything on your page, it's really easy um, to make a whole new layout. What we can do is we can add a new artboard into our document. So you can see here, this is my artboard tool. So if I click on this, I can then request another A3 artboard, which is what I created earlier. So I'm just going to, whoops. Go back to that. Only this time I want it to be portrait. Whoops. So I'm going to make that A3, there we are. Um, so it's A3 and it's portrait. And now all I need to do is um, move and copy all these elements from one place to another. So if I um, have made sure I've grouped everything properly, I can just pick this up and move it. Remember, if you hold down the Alt key, it will do a nice little copy for you. It tells you where the center is, which is great. Um, So pick up those that colour palette. Okay, quite like that. Um, I can put my labels and things on um, in a minute. Just realised I didn't hold the shift key, uh, the alt key when I, I moved those, so I, I lost them off my original. It's so quick, you can just go back and do it again. So remember, keep your finger on that key. Don't want to take that um, that label with me just yet. Now, um, these, I think I'm going to have them at the bottom, but also I don't think they should be um, stacked up like that anymore. So I can pick these up and move them like that. And I'm going to use that technique again because I've changed how these are sitting um, where I can distribute them so they're now evenly distributed. And I'll hang them off the same point, so that looks okay. And then I can put my typefaces about here, I think. And 
and then the fav icon there. I've just realised I moved the word social icon before and stole the word logo, so I'm just going to pop that back. And then I can just relabel everything. There we go, and I just use that to line everything up. And there we have it. So we've got two versions. I just had my guides um, and the second one happened in double quick time. So once you've got one done you can do various layouts until you get the one that you're happiest with and that's the end. <laughs>